Hello, and welcome to English Micro Listening Lessons, where you can improve your listening skills by learning how sounds change or disappear in spoken English. This series of videos can be watched in any order and can be used for self-study by independent English language learners or in a classroom by English language teachers. There's information in the box below the video for teachers. Spoken English can be difficult to understand due to something called connected speech, which is the continuous stream of sounds without clear borders between a sequence of words. There, that's better. Some features of connected speech that can make sounds change or disappear at word boundaries and affect your ability to hear words you know are coalescence, elision, reduction, assimilation, resyllabification, linking, and intrusion. Don't worry. I'll explain what each of these means in this series. Awareness of them will improve your ability to hear individual words in the stream of spoken English. Ready? Here we go. This is Bethany England talking about being part of the Chelsea Ladies Football Club and how she got started playing football, or as we say in the United States, soccer. Listen and fill in the gaps. I've been here for five months. Uh, I first started just playing at my grandma's house as a kid with my friend on the street, and then he asked me to join his boys' football team, so I just went from there. I joined this season, so I've been here for five months. Uh, I first started just playing at my grandma's house as a kid with my friend on the street, and then he asked me to join his boys' football team, so I just went from there. I joined this season, so I've been here for five months. Uh, I first started just playing at my grandma's house as a kid with my friend on the street and then he asked me to join his boys football team so I just went from there. If you're watching with someone else or with your teacher and classmates, pause the video and compare your answers. Here are the answers. You might have noticed that they are all prepositions. A preposition is a word that is used before a noun to show place, time, or direction. So number one is for, number two is at, number three is as, which here is used as a preposition but can also be an adverb or a conjunction. Number four is with, number five is on, and number six is from. Some of these were hard to hear though. Why is that? It's because she used the weak form for most of those prepositions. And weak forms are the reduced form of function words, also known as grammar words, which are the smaller, less important words that help make meaning more precise. So some types of function words are conjunctions, auxiliary verbs, prepositions, articles, and pronouns. And to give you an example in a sentence, the woman feeds her dog, the and her are function words. And woman feeds dog, those are the important content words that carry the meaning. So if someone just said woman feeds dog, you would understand basically what the message was in that sentence. But if they only used the function words, the, her, you would not receive that message at all. So while these function words don't carry the meaning, they do make the meaning more precise. Why are weak forms important to know? Well, of the 100 most frequently spoken words in English, 50 are function words with weak forms. And you'll hear weak forms more often in spoken English than you'll hear their full forms. So weak forms are actually the standard in spoken English, and the full form is the exception. So if you expect to hear weak forms, it'll make listening to spoken English easier for you. Why are weak forms hard to hear? Well, there are several reasons. First, they are not stressed in a sentence. 
The important content words are the ones that receive the emphasis and the stress, like woman feeds dog. They are shorter, and as you heard in the video with Bethany, they're pronounced quickly and not pronounced clearly. And when they're surrounded by more important words in connected speech, some of the sounds disappear completely, and the vowel often changes to a schwa sound. So a brief note about the schwa. It, it's represented by an upside down E between two slashes. If you don't understand the symbols I'm using to represent sounds in this video, please see the link below to the interactive phonemic chart. So the schwa sounds like uh, uh, the sound you might make if somebody punched you in the stomach. It's made in the throat with a relaxed mouth. So the mouth doesn't really have to do much work to make this sound. It's a very easy sound to make. And it's actually the most common vowel sound in English. So even though it's not one of our five vowel letters, A, E, I, O, U, many unstressed vowels in English sound like the schwa. So to give you an example, in the phrase a million Americans, there are seven syllables, and the stressed syllables are mill and mare. So they have their full vowel sound there, but all of the other unstressed syllables just have the schwa. So we've got a mill yun, a mare, a kuns. So in this video, we are looking at prepositions, which again, quickly, are words that are used before a noun to show place, time, or direction. So here, we've got the full form, what you might see if, here or see uh, from a dictionary. And here we've got the weak form, which is what often happens in spoken English. So instead of for, you might just hear f. F. And instead of at, you might just hear at, at. And instead of as, you might just hear as, as. And instead of with, you might just hear with, with. It almost sounds like the vowel's just been removed and you just hear the three consonants, with, with. Instead of on, you might just hear un, un. And instead of from, you might just hear from, from. Again, it just sounds like maybe the vowel's been removed and you just hear the consonants from. Instead of to, you'll often just hear t, t. And instead of in, you'll hear un, similar to on, just un. And instead of of, you'll often just hear a. Uh. To give you a few common examples with that, instead of kind of, you'll often just hear kinda. And instead of sort of, you'll just hear sorta. And instead of a lot of, you'll just hear a lotta. Often people don't hear function words at all because the weak forms are used and they're just hard to hear. So to help you hear the weak forms of these prepositions, I'm going to say five sentences. Listen and count the total number of words you hear in each sentence. Pause the video if you need to, to number a paper or document one through five. I'll say each sentence three times, fast, then slower, then fast. Here we go. Number one. The movie starts at seven. The movie starts at seven. The movie starts at seven. Number two, they work for Google in California.
They work for Google in California. They work for Google in California. Number three. I am from Arizona on the border of Mexico. I am from Arizona on the border of Mexico. I am from Arizona on the border of Mexico. Number four. She worked as a professor for 20 years at Harvard. She worked as a professor for 20 years at Harvard. She worked as a professor for 20 years at Harvard. Number five. He went on vacation to Beijing in China with his family. He went on vacation to Beijing in China with his family. He went on vacation to Beijing in China with his family. So again, if you're watching with someone else or with your teacher and classmates, Pause the video and compare your answers. Go back and play parts if you need to. Here are the answers. Pause the video if you need to while you check. So sometimes saying a feature of connected speech, like weak forms, can help you hear them when other people use them. So please listen and repeat. Try to say the weak form of the words in red of these prepositions rather than their full form. I will do just a brief phrase with the preposition and then the whole sentence. Here we go. Number one, starts at seven. The movie starts at seven. Number two, work for Google in California. They work for Google in California. Number three, from Arizona. On the border of Mexico. I am from Arizona and the border of Mexico. Number four, as a, for 20, at Harvard. She worked as a professor for 20 years at Harvard. Number five, on vacation. To Beijing in China with his. He went on vacation to Beijing in China with his family.
Now let's go back to Bethany from the beginning of this video and see if you can hear these prep the weak forms of these prepositions that she uses more easily this time. So read and listen for the prepositions. Join the season, so I've been here for five months. Uh, I first started just playing at my grandma's house as a kid with my friend on the street, and then he asked me to join his boys' football team, so I just went from there. I joined this season, so I've been here for five months. Uh, I first started just playing at my grandma's house as a kid with my friend on the street, and then he asked me to join his boys' football team, so I just went from there. So to review weak forms, they are the reduced form of function words, which are the unimportant grammar words. They are not stressed in a sentence. They're shorter. They're pronounced quickly. They're not pronounced clearly. Some sounds disappear completely. The vowel often changes to the schwa sound, which is a. Uh. And the preposition examples we looked at today were for, f, at, ut, as, us, with, with, on, un, from, from, to, t, in, un, and of, a. Uh. Now it's your turn. Write some sentences with these nine prepositions, for, at, as, with, on, from, to, in, of, and then say them to your partner or teacher and classmates with the weak form. And now for the real world challenge. Listen for an example of a weak form of one of these nine prepositions, for, at, as, with, on, from, to, in, of, in a recorded or real life conversation and post it in the comments or share it with your teacher and classmates. Thank you for watching this English micro listening lesson. I hope it has helped you to better hear how sounds change or disappear in spoken English. Bye.